we, uh, we have a top seven conversation that will take place now with Riverside. It's sponsored by ACS, a Xerox company, U.S. Internet, and uh, Riverside Public Utilities. And while Mayor Ron Loveridge, um, CIO Steve Renneker, and Assistant City Manager Deanna Lorson uh, is getting ready for uh, our conversation, uh, what we'll do is uh, I'll take a few minutes to give you my observations about my visit to, uh, to Riverside, and then we'll show a video from Riverside. First of all, picture this. You're a community in the shadow of a big mammoth community like Los Angeles. You know, you're 42 miles from LAX airport, and you're about 60 miles away from the city of Los Angeles, the city center. And some would say that's a pretty big shadow. You know, driving to Riverside from LA, you know, you can actually feel that. It's just one big con constant city that's uh, along the highway. And on the way, there are all these indistinguishable communities. And you drive in there, and it's usually a big box or a mall that uh, is the center of these facilities. But when you enter uh, Riverside, there's something different. It's a, it's a real city. It feels like a real city. You come in there. There are neighborhoods. You've got a city center. And although it's a relatively small community, when you, when you think we have some big cities like Chongqing, China, at 33 million people, you know, this community is relatively small. But Riverside was the first community in the region that feels complete. It's got that central city set of elements that, as an urban planner, I really appreciate. It's a thriving and upbeat community, uh, but only a dozen years ago or so, it was apparently merely seen as a bedroom community of LA and seen as a local center for logistics, warehousing, and a bit of an agricultural hub because of the orange crop that they grew there. Not a lot of heavy employment, but uh, the epicenter of California's citrus, feud, uh, citrus industry was really important for them, and it created the richest city per capita in the U.S. as a result. Spurred by cutting-edge technologies like refrigerated rail cars and innovative irrigation systems, Riverside thrived. International competition and population growth eventually took its toll uh, by um, forcing some of those orange growers out. And by 2004, the Riverside business and residents found uh, somewhat great dissatisfaction with the city. You know, it had a lot of the elements that you saw in a lot of these kinds of cities. Smog, traffic problems, joblessness. These were just the tip of the iceberg, and we'll have that conversation. But one thing that I noticed and makes it important is that it's a university town. And for uh, many years, it seemed incapable of retaining many of the 55,000 students that attended every year. Riverside also had a large population of disadvantaged and struggling residents, many of them unfamiliar with computer technology. And the community felt the need to seek out directions uh, to leverage opportunities to harness the talent of the local institutions and develop and attract the high value tech sector that could be possible in that community. And in fact, it was recommended to me to think about this. Uh, it decided it needed to transform everything. Now, the turning point came when civic leaders undertook a, revol uh, a visionary uh, process that changed things in Riverside forever. Mayor Ron uh, Loveridge and uh, local institutional leaders convened what they called a high-tech task force. This uh, ultimately helped to evolve Riverside into the Riverside Technology CEO Forum. This pivotal point was reflected upon by many of the speakers and roundtables that I attended, and many of whom still today meet with the CEO Forum. Uh, the task force sought to attract and create high-tech firms in their community, and their strategy would be to generate, attract, and retain the talent uh, in this, these existing institutions in Riverside. And it was expected that that would create and attract new high-paying jobs in the community, and we'll have further discussions around that. It was a thing called seizing our destiny, which is the current strategy and somewhat of a mantra for, for the city, which included building a fiber network uh, to connect the university research park and the city's operations, 
It also created the office of the chief information officer. You'll be meeting with uh, Steve Reniker. That's his position. And something called Smart Riverside that he's involved with. Uh, the University of California at Riverside and the City of Riverside also partnered on several other initiatives uh, from incubators to uh, web-based hubs involving educational and social and community services. They have a thing called uh, College 311 which targets opportunities for increasing uh, college degrees. And uh, highly acclaimed virtual uh, secondary school. Uh, an innovation center offering incubation space, uh, business acceleration, and uh, opportunities of uh, interaction with angel and investor uh, 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 community individuals. Now, leveraging and, and uh, collaboration turned out to be the key ingredients of success in Riverside, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So, not to steal their thunder, let's see this video, and then let's hear from Riverside. We're one of the unique cities in the world, really, that has a wireless infrastructure that's available across our city and free for all of our residences and businesses. In November of 2011, Riverside was recognized as having the fastest average connection speed in the United States due to our elimination of dial-up internet with free Wi-Fi and high-speed fiber to all of our government facilities. Students realize when they get out in the workforce, the workforce is digital, college is digital, and we're teaching them those skills they need so that when they leave our walls, they go prepared to their next step. You have boring old textbooks and you don't have fun apps like that, and then when you have the iPod, everything just explodes. A number of classrooms that students are checked out with their own individual iPod touch. In addition to that, there would be typically six iPads deployed in the same classroom. All of our middle schools have heavy uh, mobile device deployment and Ramona High School specifically is probably our greatest uh, implementation there. It's the first all digital high school in California, third in the U.S. And so each of the students has a seven inch Android tablet. We uh, have all their textbooks on that. We have a student dashboard that gives them key information. So the digital dashboard has allowed me to be more in touch with my education, with my teachers, myself, my parents. It's a motivation and it's knowing where you are in your education. Teachers no longer have to be the disseminators of knowledge. Um, we are able to facilitate what goes on in the classroom, sending students in various places um, to meet their needs. It's given the students the power over their own education. And when I'm posed with a question on homework, I'm able to figure it out myself. I go on to YouTube and I go on to the internet and I'll punch it in and so I'm, I'm able to break down that question and analyze it for myself to get an answer and really comprehend and understand what exactly it is I'm doing. The technology itself has allowed me to challenge myself in my education on a whole nother level. Smart Riverside, free Wi-Fi, uh, they're meeting the community halfway and it's, it's awesome. It has been a phenomenal help to us because at the time when we had little or no money economically, they stepped in and gave us training and provided us with a free computer that really helped my son finish school and now he's almost graduating from college and me myself to return. And Smart Riverside has provided me the right tools and skills so that I was able to return back to the workforce. Collectively, Innovation Economy, City of Riverside, and the University of California Riverside created a platform for commercializing innovations. Innovation Economy works on commercializing innovation. The university works on research and development and the city provides an environment that promotes the creation of business. So we see all factor as a model for transforming innovation and taking them into the marketplace. As we move forward, we see innovation economy duplicating that model in partnership with the city as well as the university. We're really starting to create a physical environment where innovators can 
turn their innovations and ideas into businesses. Innovation Economy Hub is a designation for a 2,500 acre zone inside the city. That zone contains many of the elements that are required to commercialize innovations and take them into global marketplaces. By having this environment that encourages innovation commercialization, we're setting up new social and economic opportunities for the community, for the city, and certainly for the region. The new research facility opened today in Southern California. It's geared towards controlling mosquitoes and... Smart Riverside has just awarded its 5,000th computer to a city resident. Riverside was the fastest connected city... It has just won an international top seven intelligent communities award for the second year in a row. It's about connecting every part of America to the digital age. A student who can take classes with a digital textbook. At this point, we have over 10,000 mobile devices deployed and probably, I think, another 2,000 on order right now. Uh, I really enjoyed visiting your community. It was the first time I've been to Riverside. I've, of course, been a lot of times to, uh, to L.A. And, and the area. And frankly, until I met Steve and you were part of the process, I had never heard of Riverside. And uh, so one of the questions I have for you is, uh, uh, you know, every community has a crisis and, take, and they take advantage of crises uh, to raise the profile or uh, raise the, the opportunities that exist in the community. What, what was your crisis and what did you do about it and, and have you come out of that? And can you talk a little bit about that? Mayor? I, I think you've sort of identified the, the crisis as you placed Riverside in the context of uh, Southern California. Some 19 million people, you add San Diego, it is 22, 23 million people. And so for the, uh, the city of Riverside, the, the crisis really was, in my judgment, how to, how to compete, how do you distinguish, how do you separate Riverside from other cities in this extraordinary region we call Southern California. And, uh, I think we've partly have done that to, I think, sort of three ways. I mean, one was, as you identified, and here is identified, uh, by recognizing the University of California as a kind of key to the future of this, of this, uh, of our city. Uh, second, we went through uh, we call Riverside Renaissance, a $1.5 million investment, but uh, it was for infrastructure and also I think we understand that people evaluate cities by what they look like. You, you can, it's hard to see a county or a state or a country. You can see a city and you make judgments by, by, by what you see. And I think the sort of third thing was what we call seizing our destiny, which is our economic development plan. Uh, we've looked at economic development plans. There are not many like this and, uh, in California or I suspect in the country. And the lead came from uh, uh, a dean of uh, a school of management at UCR, which contrasted Malaysia and Singapore, and said, uh, which do you want to be, and, and focused on quality of life. And so we, uh, unlike our past economic development plans, the current one, Season Our Destiny, has a quality of life focus. But it wasn't simply in City Hall. It was a collaborative thing where uh, many people in the community now I have an identity and participation in this uh, seizing our destiny. So you have a significant broadband capability in your community. Are, how are citizens using it? How, are, how, are, how is the community using it? Well, I, our, it's really interesting. When we got going on this whole project back in 2006, it was initially a project that was to help our police department. We, we were trying to get more technology out into our city departments, our police department wanted to put in-car video inside their units and we, we tried to figure out what's the best means of getting that video out of the car back into City Hall. And so we originally deployed a 4-9 network. Um, as we were deploying it, we said we could go to a tri-band radio to include free Wi-Fi over our entire city. So as we blanketed it out for internal city use, uh, we were able to, to provide an infrastructure that provided free internet for all of our citizens and businesses. So we, as we rolled that out, we realized we could bridge the digital divide if we have free broadband, if we could just figure out how to deliver free training, free PCs and devices that will allow that outdoor signal to get indoor to the home, we'd be able to bridge that divide. And so far, we've, we've benefited a little over 5,500 families. So tell me a little bit more about how those families get 
access to some of these 5,500 uh, uh, free computers. Well, I think our, our biggest benefit is, is a partnership with our schools. Our schools, once they heard about the program when we initiated it, said, hey, if you can provide free computers to our labs in our schools so the kids can use them during the day, we'll have certified instructors teach the families in the evenings. And so there started our program. Uh, we were able to have people just call 311. They call 311, they get registered into a class. The certified instructors have access to the same database so they can enroll the classes on a first come, first serve basis. After the completion of the class, we have a group of uh, kids that came from a gang intervention program that now run Smart Riverside that actually ensure that those PCs are delivered to that family on completion of their class. Mm -hmm. The other thing, Steve, Steve uh, how, how is this paid for? I mean, uh, how much does it cost the city? So it doesn't cost the city anything. So we you like to hear that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's why you asked the question. You just wanted to check, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think that the biggest benefit is we, we figured out that being an e-waste collection center and partnering with a statewide certified recycler through the collection of e-waste, we fully self-sustain the program. It's fantastic. I know I, I toured the facility and. Uh, you know, just as an aside, you might want to talk about some of your employees because it, it's a really heartwarming uh, story. So it's a, it's a program called Project Bridge. It, it was actually started by the court systems, uh, working with the county and, and with the city. And these are individuals that got into trouble in their high school years, uh, but they were given one more opportunity. And the opportunity was um, to, if they had some computer technology uh, aptitude, uh, Smart Riverside would train them, we get them A plus certification, um, and, and really it's a one strike thing. If they, if they don't perform up to our levels, uh, they go back into uh, another program. Uh, so all of them today uh, that have been through it, uh, we have two individuals now, uh, Jesse and Will, and, and both these individuals have been in the program four years. They now run the program themselves. Uh, they're, fu they're fully benefited. Our, our IT is outsourced to Xerox. We've been able through Smart Riverside. Those employees are now Xerox employees, fully benefited and have created a great resume for themselves going in the future. Yeah, Riverside is not a, it has varied income across the city of some 300,000. And I, I think we understand that uh, what computers do for many is a great equalizer. It gives them a chance to compete, uh, which they wouldn't have otherwise. Now, uh, just a, another aside on this one. You had uh, a dozen years or so ago, you didn't have a community that uh, was uh, able to really utilize uh, high technology in the way it is today. Uh, how would you describe your community today from that point of view? Much, much higher tech. I mean, it, it's an example. I mean, one of the things when Acme Technologies came out and they did a, a worldwide study of average connection speeds across the world, you know, we tried to figure out how did Riverside, 305,000 people, become number one in the United States? And it's real easy. We've eliminated dial-up. You know, everybody that needs access to the internet starts at one meg, and then it just grows up from there. We'd be able to entice other carriers, like AT&T came in and delivered uh, their UVerse service as a result of a partnership we had in delivering our Wi-Fi uh, project out there. A lot of options for citizens for broadband. So yesterday at the master class, we heard that uh, Chattanooga, of course, is a one gig community, but struggles to figure out ways in which to use that gig. You're at one meg, but you're growing, uh, but you aspire to, to be up at that level as well at one point. Oh, we would love to be like uh, Chattanooga. I think uh, uh, certainly they're gonna grow into those shoes. And uh, I think at least at one meg right now, it's good enough, but we recognize as a community, we've gotta go beyond that deliver the, the services of the future, whether it's, whether it's telemedicine with our new medical school at UCR, um, or whether it's uh, some of our smart grid initiatives. Good. I'd like to switch over to the universities and, and the workforce. Uh, you have a substantial university and uh, community. It's uh, f about 55,000 students. Uh, what's your strategy around keeping them in your community? Students have feet and can leave at any time. Uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts around how to embrace them and bring them in and keep them in your community? Deanna? Well, as the mayor mentioned, Season or Jesse is our economic development game plan, but it's really a collaborative, community-driven plan to look at quality of life. 
Uh, arts and culture is a key component of that, turning spaces into places, p making Riverside a place people want to be and want to stay. So that's a, a key strategy where we're really reaching out, partnering with university business to make Riverside the kind of place that they want to live and raise their family and, and make their life. Yeah, and I think almost all of us accept the kind of uh, Richard Florida's comment about the importance of the creative class, particularly of the 25 to uh, 34. We've done a scan of the country asking where are the kind of best programs for trying to retain graduates. And uh, in our judgment, uh, Philadelphia had worked very hard on this, and they had something called attract, uh, engage, retain. And one of their ideas was to have internships, where so once people being invested in the community and networks, they're much more likely to stay. We placed a, a heavy emphasis on this. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the university's uh, uh, programs that I visited, uh, you were, the one, at one point you were awarding uh, and celebrating a, a new business, uh, and uh, at another point you were taking me through uh, a facility that is actually invested uh, by, uh, by the Chinese. Can you talk a little bit about sort of the innovation that takes place at, at the university? Well, we, we have a, a, a research uh, arm that's part of the private sector called CSERT, and it, it does uh, a combination of things. It has a big solar um, facility there uh, for research. It also determines alternative fuel uh, types of programs. Uh, and they're involved with Toyota and Ford and others out there. Uh, I think the, the new Chinese relationship with Winston Chung uh, and actually building an arm where, where, where it's not becoming more of a, a high-tech green community f around solar, but now we figured out how to create storage. So a lot of the, the research at UCR is going to be around so uh, solar storage. So Winston Chung has invested uh, quite a bit of money uh, into the University of Riverside where they're actually the arm of the research institution. It has a one megawatt battery storage mm -hmm. facility. Uh, there will be a second that will be installed later, later this summer at the CSERT facility. Uh, so I think a lot of the, the research around there is really going to help the world as far as uh, sustainability for the long term. One of the takeoffs, I think, for our city was, and it was identified just briefly in the video, is what we call the CEO Forum. But mm -hmm. it's not a forum that's sort of uh, at a distance. Uh, it, is, it is located at, at the, it, and it's hosted by the University of California School of Engineering. And so you have the major CE, high-tech CEOs meet once a month on the campus, and so you had this kind of coming together of their best ideas with uh, the university. Uh, in California, I think we're increasingly privatizing the University of California, and so I think uh, the whole system is uh, trying to figure out how to, to engage the outside world in ways that was not true when I began teaching at UCR uh, many years ago. And, and you're still very active. I remember uh, quite a few meetings. You got up in the middle of it and said, I got to go teach a class. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and you're very active that way. Good for you. Uh, the university is a pretty, pretty uh, smart community in and of itself. Can you talk a little bit about uh, uh, the university climate there? Well, you know, part of it's the, it's the University of California, Riverside. We also have two private universities and a community college with about 25,000 students. And so, uh, I mean, there, there is a kind of excitement that's taking place on, uh, on these uh, on campuses. And I think what we're trying to do is to have this excitement connect with the community and connect with, uh, with the kind of economic prospects of, of, of the city. But, uh, uh, what, what, I remember uh, the question: What are your what, what are your assets? And uh, the Riverside's primary asset is we have uh, three universities, and community college. Uh, People are your big, biggest resource. That's right. Absolutely. Used to be oranges. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, our theme here is about platforms of innovation. So, uh, if you're looking at uh, describing your community and your your private sector participants as well as the institutions and government. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how, you're, how you collaborate? You described a little bit of that uh, with the university, but how about the broader community itself? Talk a little bit about that collaborative uh, force that takes place there. Well, I think if you take a look at Riverside, our, our, probably our primary uh, value is, what ta is this notion of collaboration, uh, and it takes all kinds of different forms. But my own premise of, uh, of being mayor, and I've been mayor for 18 years, is you've got to bring people to the table. And so we've created 
all kinds of tables in our city. We have a higher education business council. We, uh, we have a chamber of commerce, which works for, uh, very, uh, very closely with us. It's the CEO forum that, uh, that you mentioned. We have created a whole variety of, uh, of uh, we call kind of uh, task forces, which uh, sort of focus on, on particular uh, issues. We're working on being fit, fresh, and fun. We have a, a arts and innovation uh, uh, task force. Uh, we have one for being a sustainable community, which we bring people together. But uh, I, I think a key is not simply what City Hall uh, does, but it's really how you bring people to the table and kind of work on, on, on issues not only with the City Hall worries about, but the community does also. Yeah. So, Please, I was go ahead say another example of that is the Innovation Economy Corporation, which is a private business looking at commercializing technology coming out of UCR. An example was provided in the video with the mosquito research and, right. and trying to target uh, malaria prevention. And, and that was something the city partnered and helped provide a little bit of, of rent abatement, very minor funding to get them started. And, and uh, partnering with them and helping to brand the Innovation Economy Hub as well as, as a partnership that we're doing to really promote uh, partnership and, and privatization and commercialization of that technology. And you know, the, the community, as I went through it, uh, is, is working very hard to create a, a real culture and, a, and also a, a, a beautiful downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about the creating a quality of life that helps to uh, attract and retain uh, it, new citizens as well as keeping the, uh, the existing citizens there? Well, a few years ago, we went in a you know, livable community ward, and I was trying to express why there was. Uh, some said it's because of the great skill of the mayor, but I, 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 I thought I thought that that really isn't that was other. But the, I thought that the answer to me really was a kind of social capital notion, uh, and that is uh, people who come together, who worry about uh, each other, worry about place, and trying to build on social capital. And I I, I think social capital is one. To, uh, and you've got to connect social capital with neighborhoods, you try to connect social capital with schools, you try to connect social capital with, uh, with downtowns. Uh, uh, one of the most important sources of social capital is the community of faith. We have an extraordinary one in, in our own city. We just had a summit to try to bring the community of faith leaders uh, connected with the education leaders. But I, uh, uh, I think a, a, a major Quest has to be in cities, how you connect social capital uh, with uh, uh, objectives you have. So, you know, as you go through the criteria of ICF's uh, uh, intelligent communities, it's, it's about infrastructure of all kind. You're hearing about innovation and creativity. Uh, we talk about uh, the knowledge workforce. But, you know, there are two areas that uh, also impressed me. Um, you know, we, we, we talk about uh, opportunities for digital inclusion. And uh, can you talk a little bit about that in your community? So we, we have Smart Riverside. And Smart Riverside, I think, is, is a great concept because it's a nonprofit corporation. So it's separated from the city, uh, includes private sector. I mean, we have companies like Google, Apple, IV, IBM, Xerox, uh, AT&T, Intel that sit on that board that provide us uh, input, um, as well as the CEOs and leaders of our community that sit on the board. Our mayor is the chairman, so I'm just the executive director that's got to make a lot of that happen. So we offer a variety of programs. So we offer, we offer the digital inclusion program so that our low income, any family mm -hmm. under 45000 in income qualifies to get that free training, that free computer. But we also offer economic development programs. So for new companies coming into Riverside, we uh, offer tenant improvement or rent abatement uh, types of grants that they can apply for. Uh, we also have employee relocation. So uh, employees that are coming to work for a high tech company in Riverside, uh, we provide incentives for the company or the individual, depending on what the company would, would like. The other one is uh, marketing and advocacy. Well, marketing, from the marketing point of view, uh, the day I was there, all I saw was everything top seven. Uh, from the newspapers to, I went into the hotel and the first thing that was on the television screen was, welcome to the community with top seven and Steve and other people in the community were top, 
talking to me uh, right away in, in my hotel room. Uh, and when I talked to you about it, you said, no, that had nothing to do with you. It was the, uh, the hotel that had decided to do that. So it was a real participatory community from that point of view. Um, you want to talk a little bit more about some of your marketing exploits? Well, you know, one of the problems the cities have is that you see cities primarily from freeways, and you can, uh, you, there are exit signs, and maybe you can count them, but uh, maybe Deanna might talk a little bit about, we, we've made a, a, a major effort at Riverside is to try to tell our story, not only to ourselves, but also to, to others, particularly in Southern California. Right, we've branded Riverside as the city of arts and innovation, and we really have a strategic marketing plan to to uh, sell that brand, um, it's something we've earned and we want to sell it to our residents but also to the surrounding community. And, and we hear over and over again, once people are in Riverside, wow, we never knew. And, and so it's really getting that message out to our region about how wonderful Riverside is and why it's a place where you want to do business but you also want to live and, and uh, travel, visit. The, um, uh, the community is blessed with leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, so humbly you mentioned uh, your particular leadership but you know I gotta tell you uh, I when I was there many people expressed the fact that they were very appreciative of you having been involved uh, with the community for all those years and look forward to many more with your with your leadership uh, but there are also other leaders in the community and I met quite a few of them and at various levels uh, want to talk about the leadership roles in your community a little bit of course, starting with you, Mayor. Well, I, I think, again, we sort of emphasize this notion of collaboration. Uh, Riverside is not a strong mayor forum, and uh, the, 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 essentially what you try to do as mayor is bring people together, and, uh, and that's what I really mean by setting tables. I think w what a mayor needs to do is to uh, set tables. That, and, uh, and I think we've done that. We've done that in terms of being an inclusive place. We've done it being a green community. We've done it with arts and innovation. Uh, we've done it with, these, with school districts. We now uh, have this program called uh, Completion Counts. It's a, a, a grant that we uh, uh, four cities receive, New York, San Francisco, Mesa, and Riverside, to, to raise post-secondary. Uh, post -sec but it's, the grant was based on collaboration. It was based on the community college, the, the chamber of commerce, the city of Riverside, the school districts. And I think if I could emphasize what works in Riverside is it really is collaboration, talking and, and, and sharing together. We might not have all the resources that a, some larger cities have, but uh, by working together you can, you, you can, you can find answers. Great. Well, I certainly enjoyed my time in Riverside, and uh, uh, Deanna, Mayor, and mm -hmm. Steve, you're great representatives of, uh, of Riverside and of uh, the great state of California. So thank you very much for coming here, being so agile to be able to come up at, uh, at, the, la at the last minute like this. And uh, let's give them a round of applause. I think it's a great city. Thank you.